There's my boy Virgil. He wants to ask you all to do something. Press the subscribe button in the notifications bell right below this video. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Please subscribe, like, and share. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. Yeah, I've been absent for about a week. <laughs> I have my morning coffee. Uh, I've been a little bit on the busy side, plus been a little bit under the weather, too. I picked up a, uh, I would suspect, uh, strip throat, maybe. Scratchy throat. Uh, cold, you know, watery eyes and all that good stuff. But, uh, I'm rebounding, no problem. My wife is taking care of me. And I update you on uh, on the well. It's complete. The pump's hooked up and all that good stuff. And then we got the hand pump going. So we got uh, a good source of water. Uh, the well ended up being 30 feet deep. Took a took a week to drill 30 feet. Uh, <laughs> of course, it was solid rock. But we ended up with uh, 25 foot of water standing in the well. I personally measured it. So I, I do know what's there. And this whole week we've used it uh, considerably. And uh, it's no issue. Now when we first uh, connected the pump, we turned the pump on. And uh, my pump's capable of pumping uh, roughly... Three gallon a minute or 12 liters a, a minute and uh, we let it run for 30 minutes which is uh, three gallon a minute that's 900 gallon something like that well anyway I don't know what my math is today you know <laughs> I'm not fully awake yet <laughs> but anyway at uh, a three gallon a minute uh, uh, 10 minutes would be 30 gallon, so we're looking at uh, 30 minutes, uh, be 90 gallon, I guess. That don't sound right either. I guess it is. But anyway, it's a uh, it's pump of water, and that's all my pump will put out, so I don't know what the real capacity of the uh, well is, but uh, it didn't pump it dry. Yeah, uh, brewed coffee at that. Uh, and uh, yesterday was, I don't know how long the pandemic's going on. It's, it's been, it seemed like forever that Virgil got to go to school yesterday. He'd be finishing this school year out at two days a week. Um, I'm probably about another month of it. And uh, he'd be going on Mondays and Tuesdays. And uh, he sure misses school. Uh, he he was excited, and it's it's a good thing. Uh, I'm glad he enjoys school, uh, and I'm glad he finally gets to go back. Now he is fully vaccinated, just like Grace and I, and uh, I plan on getting my second booster. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there who don't believe in the in the vaccine and all that good stuff. But so be it. You know, I want to do the best I can to protect myself and what I believe in. Yeah, you know, I've had people say they wouldn't put that poison in their body. I got some really close friends uh, that I don't understand, especially you know, being retired military. It just don't make sense, you know. How many vaccines you get when you're in the military? Think about that. Anyway, that's their choice. And, of course, it restricts their travel. So who's giving up freedom? Well, I'll go, go over here. And I can go from one island to the next. With no issues. Just have to show my vaccine card. So I don't have a problem. If you don't want to get vaccinated, that's, that's you. If you don't want to go anywhere... That's you. 
You can give your freedom up if you want to. Just because you believe something. And now we got this monkeypox coming around. I want to see what they say about that vaccine. If they're going to be so negative with it. There's one thing for sure. <laughs> if they're the ones that uh, don't want the vaccine, you can tell if they get it. <laughs> but I'm one of the fortunate ones. I guess my childhood vaccine is still valid of chicken pox. My understanding is uh, it's supposed to work for the monkey pox. But, uh, you know, I think it was 1980s when they quit giving it. So if you're born after 1980, uh, you may want to get vaccinated uh, for chicken pox. Now, I've had the chicken pox, too. I didn't get vaccinated in time. Now, that stuff is some wicked stuff now, uh, chicken pox. There's a reason I can't see on my left eye. So I battled with it for until I was 55 year old and then finally lost the vision in my left eye. Of course, that was 20 years longer than what the, the doctors told me. So in my younger days, they told me by the time I hit my mid-30s, I won't be able to see on my left eye. Well, I took care of it and I, I got to keep it until I was 55. And you know, Losing an eyesight in one eye, you well, it's, it's actually just plain old blurred vision in, in my left eye. I can see light. But what that does, it sure kills your depth perception. You know, it makes everything more difficult, you know, you have to, you know, like when you're riding a motorcycle, which I don't do anymore because of my back. I quit that about three years ago, I think, four. Most people are unaware your left mirror is for your right eye and then your right mirror is for your left eye. Now getting that those mirrors adjusted correctly with one eye, that's, that's a challenge. And it makes driving, you have to be fully alert. Even in an automobile, you have to be fully alert. Because adjusting your mirror is different even in it. Now, I'm used to using my mirrors. I, I'm one of the pe those people that can't look over my shoulder and back up. I have to use my mirrors. Uh, that's from my working days, uh, using the mirrors to back up different vehicles, uh, trucks and so forth. I just got in the habit of it. And, uh, if you, especially if you got a back, trying to back up a trailer, you know, there's no way I can look over my shoulder and back up a trailer. So that's what happens, you know. With the can't happen. It can be an issue if you, you get it into into your eyes. Well, I was a young boy when that happened, and I also ended up getting the measles. Two childhood diseases. <laughs> uh, so vaccines are important. You know, and the people don't understand. You know, with today's technology and uh, the data they can collect worldwide, they can create a vaccine fairly quick. It's not like it was before. You know, everything was networked together. So back in the early days, you know, they to get data from another country, they, it was carbon paper or whatever. And, uh, if you're lucky, you might uh, have a fax. And it was a very slow process. And everything was manually coordinated. So it took years uh, to get the data required to get a vaccine approved. See now, they, everything is interlinked and uh, they got uh, 
it's live data going on. You know, they, they can they know now. Of course, that doesn't help for long term things, but it will. It does help uh, with finding out if it has side effects or if it's effective and so forth. So technology uh, has really improved what they can do. You know, it's going to come a time, probably not my lifetime, uh, they can create vaccines or within a few weeks you know, against anything new that arises. You know, that's probably a couple of generations away, but it's coming. So we have a lot of things. Uh, yeah, you know, mankind has come a long way if you think about it. You know, at the turn of the, the century, 1900, we still basically um, living caveman style, really. You know, just automobiles just starting production. So we're still doing the horse and buggy thing, and we use animals to plow with and the farming and so forth. Communication was basic, you know, Morse code, if you're lucky. <laughs> and, you know, we use them, the mail service. So you go to a letter in New York and send it to San Francisco. Use weeks, maybe even months, getting a letter. Now, your know, mail is... Uh, down to almost nothing, I guess. Uh, this is something important, documents or related statements. But most of those now are done by email. Yeah. Look what has happened in a hundred years. Now it's 122 years, if you want to get technical. Uh, <coughs> no. Back in the 60s, if you had a computer to do what a cell phone could do, my God, it'd take up almost a whole building. Um, probably several thousand square feet. Not counting uh, the expense of operating it and keeping it uh, temperature down. Look how far we've come. And, you know, uh, it's going to continue that way. Hopefully, you know, I like to see a time when mankind can actually get along. So in my lifetime, you know, I people, countries fighting one thing or another, and, and over mostly resources. When we boil down to the almighty dollar, there's got to be a better way. I just hope man can do it before he makes himself extinct. You know, that's a big thing now. Oh, I know I'm rattling on, but that's, that's some of the things I think about in the mornings, you know. Uh, they got to be a way for people to get along. Maybe we a lot of start when the kids are young. So, do we still teach kids responsibility? I'm wondering. I teach mine responsibility, by the way. We're all very responsible and proud of it. It's not like uh, most kids that are the only child, they get very selfish. Virgil is uh, more like me. He's and his mom. He's very sharing his friends and so forth. Uh, he's, he's not like children that I've seen that are growing up with that uh, were only childs. Well, they're so selfish. Virgil's not that way. But living here in the Philippines, I get to experience things. Uh, that's more down to earth. You know. They 
people I would teach the world a lot. They're very friendly people. They're family orientated. And to be honest with you, they're given the opportunity. They're very intelligent. If given the opportunity. Their education system is very lacking. But maybe there's a reason for that. Of course, the ones that actually get educated uh, generally end up uh, working abroad. So what's left behind is the ones that don't have the opportunity for the education. And they get the mediocre jobs. They end up being sales clerks and uh, physical labor, construction and so forth. And the wages are very minimum. But anyway, folks, that's, that's my rant for the day. <laughs> and I apologize for taking a week to get on here. Life is good here, by the way. If you let it. That's the key. But if you come here with, you want to bring your problems with you and your life and your lifestyle, you think you can uh, <coughs> push your ways on on them? Uh, your time here might not be for you. Oh, no. You got to be willing to adapt. And put away uh, your fast pace of life. You want to hit the brakes and slow down. Sometimes that's hard to do. Yeah. And my week personally has not been so slow. You know, there are a lot of things on the agenda. I got more things you got to do. Uh, uh, five years in this house, we we got some maintenance we want to do. And painting and replacing some this plywood that's uh, that's another thing too. Material is in. Uh, it's hard to get good material. Of course, you know, if you lived closer to the larger metro areas, you probably can, but here in the provinces, it's difficult. But anyway, thanks for watching, and if you like uh, what you hear, and Subscribe, uh, <coughs> like, and share. So, until next time, hopefully everybody takes care and does well. See you soon.